Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! And I am... The Hammer! Welcome back to more Kirby Triple Deluxe! Last time, we became... The Hammer! And this time, we continue on with Old Odyssey, pressing on and on and on into 3-3! We got four keychains to be on the lookout for, so seems like it's gonna be a pretty full day! So we're gonna start off by using this gyro cannon, launching ourselves through the part to get the most collectibles. It generally seems what common logic would dictate is best. Launch up. Get all those stars. I'm not going for the Gordor on an alternate pathway this time, instead going for the goodies. We'll launch up, get even more. And I'm just so happy that we have hammer for our ability now. Ah, did you catch that? I do good damage and I do it rapidly. I get results. I am the hammer. Always take hammer whenever you see it. It's the best tip that I can honestly get. If you're finding, if you find Kirby kind of hard to get used to, I, I've heard of some people saying that they find it overwhelming just how many abilities there are. And even though it is usually just one button with different directions on the D-pad to determine which move you get, I can see that. There's a lot of copy abilities. A lot of them have depth. You have stuff like Fighter where it just has a million moves that combo into a million other moves. I, I get it. If you ever feel like that, you don't have to switch copy abilities constantly. Really, whenever the, there's an obstacle that requires a certain utility, do you ever need to do that? Find an ability like Hammer. You have invulnerability during the dash attack. That can be used to your advantage in a lot of situations. It's easy to grasp, it's good at fighting, it even has good utility. I can tell you I'll be sticking with this for a long time. You have no idea the nervousness in me that I wasn't going to make that. Combo that guy to death, he will never know the experience of being explained. Uh, he was a Grizzo, a pretty rare enemy, generally has a lot of health, but you wouldn't know it because Hammer is just that damn good. We pick up something rather extendable, and it's pretty clear exactly how this works. It's cool. These spider enemies are called Komos. Apparently these are also kind of a rare enemy. Eyes open for them, all three of them. They just kind of hang off of ceilings and drop onto Kirby. If you destroy the web that they're hanging from, then they fall instantly. This here is a 3D laser bar is the name that they chose to give this thing. This item sounds cooler than any of my abilities. It just uh, reacts to things in the background. You can destroy these objects, clear the way for yourself. I don't like you smiling at me while you bomb me. Do you have any idea how scary that would be in real life? It really is true that if you remove the age rating off of, if you remove the uh, age rating off of Kirby and just made it super realistic, it'd probably be the most disturbing thing in the world. This flashlight with a nice name is timed. There's not any penalty to it breaking in your hands, just not being able to solve the puzzles with it. Keep that in mind, because now that we understand how to use it, they're gonna start hiding harder and harder sunstones behind them. It's called game design. Um, oh. Pound him into gravel and then pound that gravel into dust. There's another ability, you can grind things below you. In fact, we'll do that right now. What other moves has Hammer got? I'm using the same ones over and over again now. By standing still and pressing B in midair, we get a slower version of this attack that I really like. I don't know why I'd ever really use it. Uh, no! This is gonna be wrong, isn't it? No! Maybe there's some kind of... I'm happy! Maybe there's like a tier list where internally it decides what ability you want more? Uh, if this were Kirby 64 the Crystal Shards, I could have had a hammer made of stone, and I can't even imagine how powerful that would be. What else we got? We're not using the hammer throw. Underwater wheel, so it works well underwater as well, like it wasn't versatile enough. By watching carefully, we can hit this thing. This is a Pacto. Isn't that that guy who always says Nintendo is doomed? Nah. No. Uh, he chews up Kirby and spits him out. He cannot be inhaled. So he does unto you what you were gonna do unto him. I'm sorry, Naughty, but you're gonna go from sleep to coma. Bop, right on the cranium. I don't like showing Sleep Kirby enough to do that, but what I guess I could talk about with Sleep Kirby is, in the opening cutscene when Kirby goes to sleep, he has Naughty's cap on and is actually Sleep Kirby, which is a fun touch. Shows a lot of attention to detail from the animators. That means that Kirby has a basement full of Naughties underneath his house that no one else knows about, and he eats one of them alive every single night in front of all of its friends, all so that he can get some sleep. Like I said, most disturbing franchise when you actually think about it. Boom! Anytime that there's ever a movement that's telegraphed and you can get it to go into that attack, you will hit for so much. It's on par with um, with a powered up star bullet. This is probably the only copy ability that I would say actually challenges the star bullet in being the best damage. 
Uh, here we go. There's that utility I was talking about. We gotta tilt that once the flame is on it to connect it. And then maybe get ready for that. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, line it up properly, good. Now one more, don't fail. Ah! Why do I react so strongly when I fail at anything in this? It's not really that big of a deal in this particular instance. I can just go out and back in. I'm slightly in danger from the cannons, but Yar, it's not really that big of a... It's not so bad. It's a pretty non-threatening atmosphere. I think the main issue is just the talking and not moving is kind of hard. I also tend to bob my leg up and down while recording a lot. I guess it just pumps the blood through me and gets me feeling really good. I've heard that endorphins can lead to you just having more confidence in general, so that explains why I... Okay, good, 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 good! Explains why I like working out before these things going up! I hate clean rooms. When it's my enemies, that is. You know, you don't want your enemies having a clean base. You want to hurt their efficiency as much as possible. Get them where it really hurts, where they won't see your assault coming from. Nobody ever suspects janitor assaults. Hit you. Oh, no. Hit you. Right in the uppercut. Ringle Dingle just had his ding finale. This here is a Foley. You can inhale it for the same ability that the Poppy Bros Jr. gives you. So you get another one that we haven't seen. Oh, wait, wait. Hang on. I thought I saw ice cream down there. Did that thing eat it? I guess maybe it did. Okay. Hop on the warp star. I was worried that I didn't go up there when I did too. Um, I think right over this way, past the cannon maybe. Yes! Exceptionally well hidden rare keychain. This might be one of the last ones the players get. Make sure you got it. Hopefully that showed you why the hammer is so good. The invulnerability you get during the dash attacks are great. Uh, I was able to go inside of large enemies without consequence. It's flexible in all ways except range. No! Got it this rate, I'm gonna have to tell you what getting to Cloud One does in a bonus video. <laughs> Spinny? From Kirby Squeak Squad. Was I the only one who misread that title for years as Kirby Squeaky Squad? I kind of like that name better because it just sounds so silly. Mask Deedity. Kirby Superstar Ultra. Collected 50 keychains and reached the Keychain Hunter rank. Did I really only get two keychains that entire time? No, I got three. Do keychains restore health? The keychain I missed is in this cavernous part where we went into that hidden area behind the vines. You fly to the top right here and you get it. Collecting a rare keychain again turns it into a normal keychain. Keep that in mind if you want to replay a place over and over again to grind for keychains. I wouldn't recommend doing that at this point in time because you actually can't get all the keychains without progressing enough through the story. I'll let you know when this is though. My finger twitched and I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being on a game show and not answering a question that you know correctly because it's for real money. Invincible Candy. Magic Kirby from Squeak. Wow. That era had some weird copy abilities. Squeak Squad's one of the few that I've never actually played, but between this and Bubble Kirby, this thing introduced some wild stuff. Oh, and Animal Kirby as well. I, I complimented that one for being a really weird power that only showed up one time. Broom Hatter from Dreamland 3. Tack. Zigzag and Yum Yum. And Stage 4 looks to be a two-parter. I had to go back and clear another stage again just because I'd screwed something up. Uh, got a couple extra blocks. Macho statue! Clean Kirby. <laughs> I took up this profession because I wanted to scrub the macho statue. <laughs> anyway, let's get started on stage four. Hello, music. The fact that I hit a Scarfy way that the best. I wanted to get rid of hammer, so I decided I'd throw you, show you the hammer throw ability. I 
recognize the melody from the much more well-known Gourmet Race, but this is actually Peanut Plains from Kirby's Adventure, where the tune originated. Kirby's Adventure, I would say, is where Kirby gets good, and from that point onward, really any of the games that I've tried that you, go, you can go back and experience, I think are still great today. Even with it being on the NES, and yeah, even with Nightmare and Dreamland existing being a remake and everything, I think it's still very worth playing. Here we're gonna get hyped up on candy, and oh no, 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 you get back here. You get back here right now, mister. I'll kill you in another life. I just did. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Grandies, I don't have to deal with grandies. I'm hyper and flying off the walls, literally. Ah, banging my head into the wall. Who cares? Who needs heads where I'm going? Ah, I threw a feather at it. It was just really hyped up, okay? We'll grab our first sunstone out of many. And we have four keychains to be on the lookout for. I think I have one. Is there any way that I can check that? Uh, I don't think there is. Uh, I can toss you and then do a shuttle loop. Let's try it. There it is. You toss the enemy up into the air and then you do a shuttle loop to combo them. You press side B right next to them in order to do it. Yes, it's what I was reading when I was checking that. I also wanted to know the answer to that. Oh. Get rid of, there's another one. Well, that went to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> it's funny. You know, for, for as much as I've been getting hit, I haven't really been dying that much. There was that one level that got me with a wheel, and that part was kind of challenging, but aside from that, not really that bad. Uh, sure. We can see a new copy ability. Spear, Kirby. The spear is a true warrior's weapon. Take note, Super Smash Brothers. Multi-spear attack, spear throw, moon drop. The spear ability even puts puts all these moves and more at your disposal. You can even use the spear underwater. I would say that that's the most identifying thing about spear is just how good it is underwater where other abilities aren't. We got a spear thrust with B, uh, a back thrust after pressing B, press back and B, a skyward thrust, moon drop as we heard, uh, dash attack, uh, dash B and repeatedly in midair, a B repeatedly for a combo attack. There's gonna be a lot to go over here, especially with some moves being only done underwater. Any enemies, any takers? Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Tough Customer. You, ah, ha, ha, ha. Our dash attack actually allows us to throw it like a javelin, meaning that it does have some versatility to it. This also does have slashing properties, so again, good utility. May not have other stuff, but hey, can't complain. There's the combo attack. Has a finisher at the end of it, so you can't just spam it endlessly. Uh, nothing down here. Was there, was there a way to get into the background that I missed? I know what to do here. You see that hole in the wall? Hidden door. Secret door, secret door, secret door. We have to take the cannon. We got enemies in the foreground and the background. I'll take out a Scarfy because why wouldn't I? Oh. I thought I was being smart. It's okay, you can try this room again as many times as you like, which means you can kill the Scarfy as many times as you like. There's that rare keychain. This can also be one that can take a while to get. Secret doors are kind of a staple in Kirby. I could see you playing through an entire Kirby game and not knowing that they are a staple because that's what happened to me as well. Uh, I remember that I went through this entire thing and anything that required a secret door was just the thing I never got. The javelin throw is excellent. It can be done in rapid succession. Really easy. Um, there's that back B. So attacking on both sides of yourself, like your Xena or something. I don't know if Xena the Warrior Princess actually does use a, a spear. Maybe she does. I've never seen an episode of it. I remember it was on when my, my, uh, I think my parents watched it when I was like five. I don't know. Is there really not a way to get into that background? Because wait, I'm willing to bet this is one of those stupid rooms where even though there's always a way to get into the background, this one thinks it's special or something and better than everyone else. And Scarpies are made of ice cream. They're filled with ice cream. That really just means especially now that they need to die more than ever before. So there's a two-way door that goes there later. I guess that's how you get there. At least this one's clear about how it is you actually get back there. Hop on the warp star. Hi, you haven't said hi to me in a while. I'm glad to know you haven't forgotten how hard I'm working for your sake. I'll keep at it. This does lead to that background, does it? 
maybe it doesn't. Uh, you. I'm gonna take your weapon and use it to kill your best friends. It's the only suitable punishment for one such as yourself. Uh, nothing up there, nothing up here. Um, is there really nothing else to this room? I swore there was some kind of secret. There's a star there. Ugh, now I'm doubly paranoid because now it's two things that I swear are a certain way and they're not. We go up. Oh, it's this place. Okay, there's two areas like this and I thought there was only one. Uh, uh, I got caught into the attack. Gimme. I needed the extra girth to stay warm in the cold. <laughs> okay, made it through. As long as you don't die, that's the important thing. Furthering what I was saying about don't sweat it if you have to give up a good copy ability or don't sweat it if you're not switching copy abilities enough, one copy ability can get you to the end of any stage. The only difference that a copy ability makes is the style of fighting and what secrets you can get. Sometimes secrets do require specific ones, but they're usually nice and let you know when this is. That's why I thought it. In two out of three, they do hide a collectible that you have to get from riding this thing around at least once. And in the door. We made it, whew! Thought I had it. God, I'm sucking so bad. I'm playing end of level bonus games worse than John. We didn't get the middle sunstone. Clean choo-choo. Rainbow drop. And jet Kirby. Aha! Other side of this door. There's a 3D warp star behind it, and then there's another door. And that, my friends, takes you into the background. I was on the right track. I just mistook everything else about it. Slight difference. Only slight. Die! Don't take me down with you, please. Ugh. I would not want to live with a Scarfy for eternity. Give me this. Into the two-way door, we have, oh. I have to switch off of this. This is an example of Archer being precision-based, as we have a minigame that only it can do. That, the, the fact that I missed this actually plays very nicely into the fact that they are kind whenever they need one ability to do something. It's nice that it played out this way, because I've been wanting to talk about this for some time. That was one of my turnoffs about Kirby, was I felt like there were way too many abilities to learn. The game was throwing way too many of them at you too fast. I could never get used to them, and how am I supposed to know which one I need? Trust the world. It's not out to screw you. That's okay. We got back up to full health and got a great ability from having to play this one again. We're doing great. Oh! We're doing even greater than I thought! I've never been so happy to have to repeat content. <laughs> Cloud one, baby! Now I know I can do it. So now I'll try to do it more. I did it plenty of times on my practice run, and yet here it's trouble. You get 30 stars, a Maxim Tomato, and a free keychain. The fact that you can get five keychains in a continuous run of a stage by getting this, that adds up a lot over time. Wheelie. Chef Kirby. This is actually referred to as Cook Kirby. Chef Kirby's the Japanese name, and it's another mistranslation that we see in these keychains. Twizzy. Don't get your pantaloons in a twizzy. And then Rocky. Coner, because I needed two of those. The theme of the day is repeating. That's a lot of progress made in Old Odyssey. Next time on Kirby Triple Deluxe, we go into Shiveria. See you guys then. By the way, did you know the theme of the day is repeating? 